Hi guys, in this video I'm going to paint up this Comet tank uh, that's been sitting in my painting queue for a couple of years now. Scruffy Crow! So as I said, I bought this guy a little while back. Um, I've not really done much to change the model. Uh, it's a plastic and metal kit, or a resin and metal kit I should say. Uh, and I've added a plastic set of forks uh, off the Cromwell kit because all the rest of my tanks had front forks and I wanted it to match, uh, even if that's not historically accurate. Uh, I've added some sort of stowage pouches and stuff around the sides here, and it's got and a magnet in the turret, so you can pick him up by the turret and that swivels around, uh, but you can still take it off for storage or yeah, so it'll spin. You can still pick him up by the turret when you're playing the game, which I thought was handy. Uh, you can see a lot of the paintwork's chipped now, and I'm not going to worry about a whole new undercoat. Um, we're just going to try and paint over those and hope for the best. I actually paint my vehicles using the uh, painting guide that Waller gave me, because I had no clue uh, when I first got into these uh, how to paint a sort of historically, even vaguely historically accurate mini. Uh, and to that effect, I did buy the recommended paints, and I use these almost solely. Uh, for painting uh, my World War II stuff now. And they do appear to have separated somewhat since last time I used them. So, the base for uh, all my vehicles is this uh, Russian uniform. So after a good bit of shaking. Uh, originally this model would have been given a uh, under full undercoat, spray undercoat with um, Eva Halford's it looks like the black actually, or the matte grey. But I'm using this nice big soft brush and that'll help me get into all the nooks and crannies and keep it nice and thin. Um, this is how I'd have done it originally. Probably giving it a couple of coats. Uh, I'm just going to do it over again now just to catch any bits uh, that A, I missed the first time or B, have sort of worn or chipped off. I'm not worried about any details at this point, just uh, making sure I've got a nice even coat with this it's Russian uniform, so I get everything equally. This is actually my only resin tank that I own. Um, all the other tanks in my army are the Italiari plastic kits, um, which is partly why I own so many, because I actually find them a complete joy to put together. It wasn't until I started putting together those uh, uh, plastic tank kits that I realised why uh, sort of airfix modelers do the things they do. Because um, every now and again I just pick one up to buy as a bit of stress relief. Um, this actually made me think maybe I would get into just pure scale modelling um, just to build those nice complicated plastic kits up. If only someone made uh, big complicated plastic kits of something more exciting, say, I don't know, giant anime robots, maybe I'd uh, have a look into that. So now in the guide, the second step is a full wash of Army Painter Strong Tone. So I don't have a lot of that left at the moment. Um, but before I do that, I am going to pick out the stowage details uh, because I'm going to paint them a quite similar way. It's especially good for bringing out big areas like this. So now we're just going across with the Army Painter Strong Tone, just across the whole model, uh, spain, paying special care and attention to get into these nooks and crannies. And I'm watering this down a little bit, just adding a little bit of water to it as I go on, um, but not too much, because I want a nice bit of contrast. I'm sure anyone watching has used washers before and knows uh, that they don't look great on these big flat areas, um, but for the purpose of this, that actually it helps later on when you try and make this all look weathered and tired. So if you don't have the Army Painter Strong Tone, or if like me you've literally just this moment run out, uh, the Citadel Agrax Earthshade works uh, just as well, uh, especially if we mix the two together, but that's what we're doing the turret with. Alright, so that is the coat on, as you can see they're quite shiny at the moment, I'm just going to make sure there's no bad pooling, but that doesn't really matter at this point as long as it's only in the proper recesses. Um, 
and I'm going to leave this, well, I'll probably end up leaving it overnight uh, for that all to completely dry. Okay, so my wash is all dried and yeah, doesn't look great at the moment, well, that's fine. At the same sort of stage uh, with my Merlin. Um, so yeah, I paint all my vehicles for this army just exactly the same. Uh, next step is to give it a brush down with the original colour, the Russian uniform, and you end up with something a bit more like that. Uh, and that is my automated carrier, which I'm also kind of painting it alongside. And I want this to be a bit of kind of a dry brush, but also picking up quite a lot of the flat areas. But I mostly just want it to really sort of like catch on these details as well and we just want to try and keep the recesses that we shaded with the wash nice and dark We're kind of picking everything else back up the eagle eyed among you will spot that I'm missing a magnet uh, but don't worry we'll fix that at the end super glue is not always the best thing to glue those in with as it can get a bit brittle okay following the next stage in the painting guide I'm going to go for a 50-50 Russian uniform and dark sand. I'm not entirely sure about the 50-50-ness of it all. Uh, I might add a bit more uh, Russian uniform. But actually, that looks all right. And once again, we're using my big soft makeup brush. And we really are just concentrating on the edges now. We really don't want much paint on this brush at all. So I'm doing a bit of a dry brush, but I'm also dragging the edges of my brush across the straight lines just to make them really pop. Once again, I'm trying to work on these little edges, try and get a nice subtle shade. But whereas my first dry brush, I, I kind of covered all of this little circle. My second one, I'm just concentrating on the edges. I'm going to get all of that like that. But yeah, that's basically the sort of skin tones, the uh, the base of the colour done. Uh, the next step is going to be some transfers. Uh, so I've got my little tin here, uh, where I keep all my transfers. Somewhere under here, we've got some, some from a Cromwell, that might come in handy. Uh, and I think this bag has got all my World War II style ones. So I will be looking at a few sort of uh, reference pictures online, um, but I won't be following them to the letter. Uh, for one instance is that pretty much all my tanks have got a uh, so star, split star on the back. Um, it's gonna be a little bit tricky with this one, with all of the stuff that's on here, uh, but I reckon I can get one quite neatly there. We're probably gonna go for circles on the sides of the turret. And then I'll just sort of throw a few of these sort of numbers and insignia and stuff on just on the front and the back to uh, give a general sort of look uh, without necessarily following something uh, to be completely accurate. Uh, so look away now, rivet counters. Okay, so I've picked a few tools and bits and pieces out. I have one of my trusty Pringles lids with a small amount of water in it. I've got a, a raggedy old brush a metal spike and a couple of soft brushes. Uh, this one I'll try and keep dry at all costs. I have got my knife with a fresh blade on it uh, and I've picked my first transfers. Now I'm going to be using a technique that was shown to me by my uh, local Games Workshop manager um, and I'll be using Games Workshop products. Uh, the good side of these is you can obviously go and pick them up if you've got a Games Workshop local. If not, I'm sure any gloss varnish will work just as well instead of the hard coat. And any matte varnish or matte medium will work just as well instead of the lamia medium. I've given both of these a good old shake. Okay, so I'm gonna start by cutting out the, uh, the particular transfer that I want. And then I'm gonna pop that in my dish of water. And while that's soaking, I'm gonna get my hard coat and I'm just gonna 
place that I think we're going to put the names just on the top of these little side bits here. So I'm going to cover the area that I want. Transfer on with this. And as my transfer comes away from the paper, I'm just going to pull that back out of there. And use my brush to sort of slide it off the backing paper onto the area we've prepared. And then press it down. So we've got the other brush for here, that's to remove some of the excess moisture. I'm using the spike on just the clear parts of the transfer so we don't do any damage to the printing. And I'm probably going to try and lay line this up in the centre. Dab away a bit more of this moisture. And then we're just flattening that down, make sure there's no air bubbles, make sure that is nice and smooth. Now I've seen a sort of model aeroplane and probably even model tank guides where they actually spray the whole model with a gloss varnish before putting the transfers on. Um, which I've got no doubt works. Um, people with much more modeling experience than me use that method. But I think for the amount of transfers that I put on a tank this size, it just seemed a little bit overkill. Okay, uh, next up. Next up we have the star. Now, as well as, so on the outside, the actual transfer surface is quite into the blue, but the entire inside of this is a transfer. So this is where I go a little bit above and beyond. I'm now gonna use my knife, which is why I've got a nice fresh blade, and I'm gonna trim out uh, the insides of these stars. Now I'm sure there'll be some comments uh, down below uh, of people got better ways of doing this. Uh, let me know if you do. Um, I'm certainly sure this isn't the easy. The, I'm certainly sure this isn't the best. Probably the best way of doing it. This is just the way I've found the most easy, and I have done absolutely tons of these. Um, so I do kind of know what I'm talking about, but I'm sure there's some hints and tricks that I haven't tried yet. Okay, so obviously because I've cut this to pieces, it's a lot flimsier now. It's on the on the tank itself. I have to be very careful not to pull this apart. Because the tank's really rough at this point, it's all these details. Okay, so I've got the bottom part sort of anchored down where I want it. And we're sort of moving some of the moisture off of there. So that sort of starts to stick. I'm now gonna take my knife in and there's some bits like in the backs of here. And I'm just gonna start hacking the transfer to pieces, to be honest. That was an absolute nightmare. And as you can see, it's not a perfect circle, but I think we've got uh, the main details in. I've basically had to cut around the four little lumps. It's still bits flaking off. But I've got it, all the bits of the transfer now. I'm trying to get them nice and smooth. I think you'll be surprised how well this is going to end up looking, uh, considering how much of a mess it looks right now. All right, there we go. Uh, I think that's all the transfers we're going to go for. We've got from the sort of standard markings on the front here, uh, and the names on the side, the star on the back, which is mostly just to match it in the rest of my tanks. Um, and we've got the company markings on the sides. Uh, we've added some extra stuff. Uh, the, I haven't seen any, any of the examples. Got a little monitor skull in here. I like to think my uh, my guys are just adding their own little personal mark. And we've got a little uh, side identification. I'm aware that in uh, in real life, a lot of the markings on tanks were, were covered up in the field. But I like to think in K47, uh, the technology has moved past the point where that even matters anymore. Uh, you might as well make your tanks exciting and interesting uh, if they're going to get attacked by a night vampire anyway. Uh, so I'm going to leave, leave these all to set. As you can see anywhere where I've put a transfer is still a little bit glossy even though I've put a sort of watered down layer on the top. And I've spread these gloss bits out. You can see on this little uh, serial number here. I've kind of spread that out here so it sort of fades in. 
That's because I didn't want sort of stern edges to where it was gloss or here where I've done a whole panel. So hopefully we can match that panel back in. All right, I've left this guy a couple of hours now and this is all nice and dry and all the transfers I did. And this is where the lamium medium comes in. Make sure that's mixed all the way through. I'm just gonna like basically just put a thin coat of that anywhere where it is um, shiny. And this will help as well with the bits where the, the previous wash left it different colors. And I said, I'm only putting a very thin layer on. And that should even out any amount of shine and it should knock the shine off anywhere where I put the gloss varnish. So as you can see, this is dried now. It's still got a kind of a bit of a sheen that I'm not comfortable with. Uh, I don't really know what I've done wrong here, but it's looking pretty good. It is looking matte in general all across. And yes, my transfers basically look painted slash printed on now. Uh, you cannot see the edges. Uh, there's no particular extra shine on them. I'm pretty happy with the way they came out. So now we've got a decorated but still fairly plain tank. Um, so the next thing is going to be two parts in one. And they're both going to be achieved with this Abaddon Black. First of all, uh, a lot of the details, uh, like this little stand, which I think is for the cannon on the front. Uh, and a few other bits and pieces are going to be painted black. Uh, and second, I'm going to paint in some chipping with my normal paintbrush. I've also built a selection of these over time. Uh, so I use these for uh, rust and I'll probably go for the, go for this one for a little bit. I'll use both of these. Um, so I'll be using these to create a sort of chipped paint effect. Uh, so these are literally just bits of sponge foam out of, out of blister packs. And as you can see quite clearly on this one, it's just been wound around uh, this old brush handle to form a sort of to form a sort of crude brush, um, and that gives me that kind of random speckle pattern. You'll see in a second, anyway. Okay, so this is probably going to be one of the funniest parts now. I'm going to load up my little Pringles lid here. Uh, this is just the bad and black, but it's a little bit watered down. I'm gonna get my little spongy thing. And this little sort of that effect is what we're going for. Okay, see on the end there, that's what we're aiming for. And I'm mostly just gonna to touch the ends, but then also kind of other places. As you can see, I've also painted in that sort of um, holder bit uh, and the tracks uh, and the gun on the front here. Painted them all in in, uh, in black. Uh, we're also going to concentrate anywhere where we think there might be wear and tear. Uh, so, for instance, these forks have clearly knocked over countless amounts of bocage and enemy, fortific enemy fortifications and all of that good stuff. So they have seen some wear and tear. So that trusty green paint is certainly almost completely worn off the front. As you can see, once again, I'm concentrate mostly on the outsides but also just giving a small dabbing across the whole thing I mean if we just compare the the body of the tank to the pristine turret you can kind of see uh, where I'm going with that and when we've got things like the decals on the top here as you sponge over these and like we might see with the back here it kind of sits the um, decals under the paint, I think, and I think it kind of blends them in, makes them look part of the vehicle rather than just 
drawn on. Okay, so my once pristine tank is starting to look pretty filthy. What I am going to do, however, is on some of these points where we've got the uh, a lot of chipping in one place, I'm just going to go over uh, with a paintbrush with black on and just colour in those bits. So this is a technique that I use on sort of sci-fi and 40k and stuff vehicles. And just, in fact, you might have seen me use it on like even fantasy armour. And I'm just adding some little chips on certain areas. Anywhere where I've gone quite heavy with the foam. I'm just gonna colour that in. Follow this down edge lines. I just want to reiterate that I know very little about historical stuff. I don't know what would necessarily be historical accurate amounts of damage or what that would look like. All I'm attempting to do here is make these look cool. That's my aim. If I can pull that off, that's what'll make me happy. Got some start white here as well, actually. And while I'm looking at the back of here, I'm just gonna fill in where I cut this a little bit too short. Next up is gonna be a bit of null oil. So again, we're thinking about weathering here. Uh, so what I'm actually gonna add is some dirt. Anywhere where we think there'd be oil or Thing like that. So for instance in these wheel hubs, just taking this in. I'm not necessarily trying to keep it the same on each one because I want it to look dirty. Okay I'm wrong, this is the, one of the most fun parts because I think it really starts to bring the model alive. It's also great on this transfer on the back because we've got all these panel lines. So I'll be using this to bring it, bring out those panel lines anyway. And where we've got it like that, I'm just gonna pull that out. So I've cleaned the brush a little bit. I'm just gonna drag that out. So it's not really changing the color, but it means there'll be a nice fade in between where we have change the colour where we haven't. Now if you've watched a few of my painting videos you'll know that I normally go between this uh, pig iron and this quicksilver. Now I'm going to be doing some chipping and some metal parts. I'm not going to use either. I'm actually going to use this cold steel. In a lot of ways this is just the beige of silver paints. It is literally just silver. It sort of sits midway between these two. All right, I'm going to use this quite sparingly um, but mostly anywhere where I Added in the extra black. It's going to get some little tickles of this. So here we go. Anyway, this bit had a, a quite a lot of dense black. Just going to run it across this edge here. Make it look like the sort of paint's worn off to be knocked off. I'm going to sort of dab that like so. And that's the effect I'm going to go in for there. Now put the front here, we've actually got some damage to the model. I don't know if I've done that or if that's how it came. It looks like a bit of a mist mold on the bottom there. But I'm kind of basically going to hide that and kind of incorporate that in. So I'm just going to make that all metally and mangled. Okay, so I just checked back at the painting guide that I've been following. So our link will be in the description. Uh, and I thought I kind of deviated from it quite a bit, but I just checked back to see what their final steps were. And actually I've been following it fairly closely. So I've dry brushed the tracks in the darker silver, the uh, Pig iron. Um, a lot of that shininess will die down as that dries as well. Uh, one thing I did forget is that there is rubber tyres basically on the outside of these. Uh, so I'm going to have to go in and touch those up. But I might wait for a few of these layers to dry first. Alright, I think I'm all finished now. The thing is dirty. I've added the chipping. Uh, I've sort of weathered everywhere that I wanted to. I've painted the road tyres in black. Uh, I've added a sort of few browns to the tyres, make them look a bit muddy, but you've still got that kind of a metallic effect underneath. Uh, I've considered sort of chunky mud effects and stuff, but at the end of the day, this is going to be a playing piece, um, so I don't want things falling off it and stuff. I need this to be fairly hard wearing. Um, I am going to consider a matte varnish on this, on the whole thing, 
uh, but I need to find a good one. I've never had much luck with spray varnishes of any variety. Um, so the turret as well, I've neatened up all of the bits of stowage, um, sort of smartened those up a little bit so they look nice, they're all slightly different colours. Uh, and I fixed the magnet in here, we super glued a new magnet back in, uh, which is strong enough to hold the whole thing up. So that's done. Uh, that is how I paint tanks. And I think it gives a pretty cool effect. Ah! And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.